for, for plebs, by plebs, dropping the Bitcoin only signal. Pleb underground. Welcome everyone to the Pleb Underground. Pleb Underground, we've hit 108. I keep crafting the feast, like each one I play. Rushing is high time preference. I want to wait. They can't help but feel blessed each one I date. Used to be a time when I talked two fours. You think you're an eight because you got two fours. Think you got game because you got them to yours to spend all your money and not even do chores. I like my flow smooth like four wheel drive. E cash to go move like the tour reel. Dive into the details from the floor. Steal five mins to add less. Help more feel hive. Main character syndrome, you're the protagonist, always lit your receptor, sign up's flush with an agonist, you, the battles you fight versus internal antagonist, you're always wondering why aren't they bagging this? Walton and Phil now all work on the roster, e cash between two peers, two years on Nostra, mustache flip through gears, new fears to foster, take a break, two dears, new tears accost her, get your cake, who spears, that's tossed it, tossed her, never being fake, fuck two beers, fuck who hears, crossed her, for your stake, please two sears, not blue, jeers, imposter, for your mate, please two ears, no clue here, just foster there. It's that time soon when you'll pretend to elect her. Misinformation spread by the evil trifecta. Journalists, lawyers, and political connectors. It's a clown world today. It's quite the specter. Straight fire, Walton. Absolute fire. Loved it. Guys, welcome back to the Pleb Underground. And joining us today, the only real Ben on Bitcoin Twitter and lead dev at Bitcoin Keeper. Ben Kaufman, man. Thank you very much for joining us on the Pleb Underground. Yeah, thanks for having me. Great to be here. Sweet. Welcome to the show. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. We're going to dive into uh, we're going to dive into the Bitcoin Keeper and we are going to talk about all things Bitcoin with Ben, the only real Ben as part of the council of Bens. Anyways, anyways, I'm sure that's going to be controversial, but but first, we are going to move it on over to the numbers yeah the numbers of course brought to us by time chain stats and time chain calendar what do the numbers look like this week phil at the time of this recording the block height is 866,221 the bitcoin fiat exchange 68,695 big max per btc look at that guys getting over a thousand more big max from last week that's right 13,337, oh, 336. Anyways, total public lightning capacity, 5,306. That's right, lightning apparently dead uh, with that much Bitcoin on it. Anyways, fastest fee, 10 sats per V bytes. I guess that mint is over from this week. And uh, the Moscow time, 1455, still too high. Can't wait to see the Moscow time below 1,000. That's gonna be that's gonna be very, very interesting. That's right, guys. You're getting fourteen hundred and fifty-five sats per US dollar. Hmm. The numbers. And Walton, that after I gave the numbers, it just blurred him out completely. So that's what it did. Those numbers were so like, crazy. So last week not last week, two weeks ago, because I mm -hmm. apologies, I was at uh this, this conference in Berlin last week. Um uh, two weeks ago, it was two sats per V byte, and, and we went, wait, it's, the fees are low. And I said, no, no, this is a bad thing because low fees um, imply that there's no market demand for scaling solutions, uh, and that's a really bad thing. So uh, f uh, fees are pumping slightly again. Uh, good. I want I want fees to go higher. Um, yeah. Hmm. Um, at this point, at this stage, it's not a concern, but it's like I, I, I do think that the fee rate, the fee rate is a, a mild indicator of how much people want to transact on Bitcoin. And if the fees seem very slow, then it does it does imply that there there isn't enough demand, and therefore we don't need scaling solutions because um, d d there isn't the demand. Um, even though uh, you know I've, I've ways people are going around it by, by batching transactions you know through lightning and you know from exchanges and things like this but yeah hmm. what, what do you are your thoughts what do you think ben yeah what are your yeah. thoughts ben do, does the fee market uh speak for whether people want scaling solutions yeah i mean of course when you when the fees are low you usually don't really need a scaling solution so maybe for for 
instant confirmation it's it's nicer right in some cases but eventually yeah when the fees are low then it's usually just better to send on chain um yeah eventually i believe the fees will be permanently high right we all believe that i guess right uh, people will use bitcoin a lot more uh fees will eventually stay high forever and then we will really we will really need the scaling solutions uh in a more stable and permanent way but yeah for now i mean transacting on chain is is really great am i the only one that tries to transact on lightning unless i absolutely have to like um i mean i rather transact on chain unless i absolutely See, have to yeah. go to lightning right like for me it's just See, i like yeah. the finality of settlement like the instant finality of settlement with with lightning is 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 much more customer friendly approach whether you're the merchant or whether you're the the client of the merchant um yeah it's better um, if you from do my like um, in shop payments or something but for m most online stuff then uh, i mean yeah you don't really need that instant confirmation right um, Again, but it's, it's so, nicer UX. It's nicer UX. You're used to. It's a better UX, yeah. It's, and it's then a going, for, it's a better flow, right? Like this is this is ultimately, like I think commerce is about is about money flowing. And if you don't, if 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 an on chain is clunky, like I, I it's good if you want to, you know, bank some some Bitcoin to self custody. But I don't know. I, what, there was I this still... funny. Who is it? Was it Andreas who's saying like? I think, I think he says something clunky. like, what, "How many how many confirmations should you have before you like accept like selling something?" And it's like, "Well, it should you, you need to accept um, three confirmations for a house, but six for a car." And the person's like, "What do you mean? Why why longer for the car? The the you know the car's like less money." He's like, "Yeah, yeah, but but you can't drive off in my house." So there's there's different kind of levels of confirmation you can mm. you can allow before you make different exchanges. <laughs> Yeah, I see. But yeah, eventually, you you know, Lightning is very nice for small amounts. For larger amounts, then again, you you enter liquidity issues. You need to manage that, or you end up doing some custodial thing. I mean, eventually, it's just easier for to do like the on-chain payments. It's usually easier, and in general, like you could say to some extent, safer, right? So Lightning. <laughs> Is so, by definition not safer than than on so chain, I've, right? I've worked out how to safely scale uh, Bitcoin panels. Um, uh, people saw it last week, uh, but it is much more <laughs> difficult to to safely um, scale Bitcoin, right? Um, e cash is one way people think that the Bitcoin is going to be scaled, and there's certainly tr there's trade offs with it, right? Like, are there are there always going to be um, yeah, essentially trade-offs when you're transacting on on higher layers, Ben. And like, it, it, is it better to have, um, yeah, I don't know, something that if if you're going to use something custodial, is it better to use something that is at least private from the from the custodian? So, it, is something yeah. like eCash better than something like Wallet of Satoshi in that regard? I mean, in some to some extent, yeah. I mean, depends on what are your goals. Um... But for, in my opinion, yeah, I like I like um, eCash a lot. So I think it's a very nice solution, at least for now. Maybe in the future we'll have really, really great um, scaling solutions that will have less trade-offs. But right now, I mean, yeah, eCash is is a pretty nice solution for low amounts. eCash seems to be a compromise, right, between a self custody solution and the entirely trusted right i'm picturing wallet of satoshi in my mind type of solution right so i i do think that that's kind of where mm -hmm. we're going it's to walton's point it's scaffolding do offline payments i don't right? know this like phil yeah huh? ecash can do offline payments and that's kind of wild to me like yeah i you agree can't do that with other bitcoin but what are the groups. risks you can't do other bitcoin... risk of an offline payment like i don't know no the risk is just the custodian right like the 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 mint right mm -hmm. so the mint truck pulling you but then yeah well the satoshi can rug you too so yeah it's kind of similar i and then i'm, yeah, I'm you still can on do... the fence about this stuff not that Dude, i'm saying I, that I like i think too. it's bad i just I'm... don't know enough right I have and, to go to the and i'm just I'm still more, listening right? yeah the it, it's if they rug you with e-cash they have to rug everyone so like there's not like so 
I, that's kind of a good thing, I think, because I mean, I don't know. I like, I don't know. Like, I'm like, surely if 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 it's like a, if they're starting to rug the custodial lightning, then you can and you hear about it, then you can get your funds out, maybe. Like if with eCash, no. But then there's there's ways that they're starting to like create ways that you can I don't know set up like proofs of proof of reserve. So like if the eCash like essentially create a way that. The, the incentive is for the for the mint not to rug because then they have to pay some greater amount to the the users because they've got some sort of bitcoin bond like wrapped up as like as well as so whatever it is um but anyway pe- people are working on this stuff this stuff that is could be interesting developing very fast right now um yeah um all right yeah there okay. there can be a lot of construction solutions but eventually they all involve some level of trust right mm. you always with lightning right you don't have that but uh, it, again it's harder to manage yourself so a lot of people go to custodian so it ends up being kind of worse anyway um and even if they don't then yeah it's it's still very nice but it's still a bit hard to manage even if you do it yourself right um, you still need to manage the liquidity. It, maybe it will get better in the future, right? Maybe with with new developments on Bitcoin, like the on chain protocol, we we could do some better constructions. But for now, yeah, I think eCash is is very nice compromise for now. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. All right, we're gonna uh, we're gonna take a look at our first numbers article. All right, let's uh, our first tweet. Let's take a look at this. So. I figured this would be a good tweet for the numbers uh, because here we go, right? Uh, Geiger Capital, uh, approximately $500 billion uh, was added to the national debt in just the last three weeks, okay? Half a trillion in the last three weeks, right? So the U.S. is at $35.75 trillion in debt. My question is... How soon do you think we get to 50 trillion? And do either of you guys think that 50 trillion, we were talking about this last night in the space, is that the psychological number that that gets people that gets people worried? Like, do you think that there's going to be a psychological number where we hit this threshold and all of a sudden some type of panic sets in? No. Hey? Eh? And no. and how far away you, do you, you think we are numbers, from that people 50? People don't even know. I think I think the next presidency can get us to there. If not, then yeah, the one after it will get us there. He's but gonna do there it. One or two presidents from there. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, probably probably one or two presidents from there. Um, but no, I think eventually the only thing that might have a psychological effect is when people don't even like know the numbers. Like, okay, what's coming after a trillion? What's coming after that? Okay, it, it's it's just accelerating and eventually, like trillion was insane back then, right? A um, few decades ago, oh. in trillion was absolutely unthinkable, right? A trillion dollar, you couldn't imagine that amount of money. And now they're spending half a trillion in three weeks. I mean, and people people are just, you can see that, okay, trillion was unthinkable, right? And now it's normal, like people don't even notice that, right? So okay. I don't think there will be some psychological awakening. No. What are your thoughts, Walton? Psychological awakening on this? You think fifty billion? You think fifty trillion does it? Yes, no. And how long do you think until we get there? No, like, <sighs> does it for who? Like uh, this, this. The average person, not, like, is... where the average person starts to give a shit about this. I think the average person does give a shit about this. They just don't know what to do. I just think they just... Like, the average person doesn't have the spare, like, mental headspace to, to, like, or time to, to, you know... I could agree with that. To do a lot of these things. I don't know, like... No, I I can't disagree with that. the The time theft from people just means that, like, especially if people have... You know, families and other responsibilities. The and they work, uh, you know, a, a kind of normal job rather than you know where they're actually compounding their their, their time by building a business. Th- those people 
I don't think they do. I think that's why those people eat eat poorly. I think that's why those people uh, drive like zombies on the road. Like I think they're full of like fiat sludge, and they 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 they're doing the best they can. But they're but <laughs> I think th there is no spare. There is no spare anything for these people. No spare money. No spare time. No spare headspace. These people are full. Learned helplessness. I think that this is what I don't it becomes. think it's that. No, not even that. Hmm. <sighs> Interesting. Like, it's not about like vi victimizing these people. It's just this is just like a like a reality, right? Like, there's there's a lot of people call them NPCs. Well, to me, it's like I don't think there's. I think I think kind of the fiat world is creating more NPCs essentially because. Through time theft, people then choose for all these like convenient options, which which always includes like less healthy food, and then these people become more and more NPC. Hmm. I can't disagree with that. Yeah, yeah no, I, I mean, I I think that that's I think that that's totally possible. All right, let's take a look at the. Uh... Uh, unless Ben, did you have something you wanted to add before we take a look? No, I'm just answer? saying that maybe it really is all connected, kind of. Yeah. It, it is. I, I do agree with that, right? Like, it's not just one particular thing, right? It's, I guess that's kind of naive on my part to try to give it like this one particular thing. You know, it's kind of a simplistic view of a very complex, multi, you know, I guess multi threaded issue. You know, because let's face it, it's it's a lot of different things, right? Like Walton was alluding to, right? It's the food, it's the, the lifestyle, the quality of thoughts, the quality of life. Anyways, all right. We're not depressing people. It's, just, it's the numbers. We're still have good stuff to go through. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, let's take a look at the uh, the last article here for the numbers before we wrap it up. I know this probably should have been on wrecked, but I have so much on wrecked that I figured I would do this, guys. Here we go. Uh, yeah, um, one ounce gold bar was just tokenized to the Bitcoin blockchain for the first time uh, using the uh, Ordinal protocol. Heavy, dude. Yeah, yeah, doesn't it? Uh, the owner of a gold bar, but this is my favorite part right here. This is right here. My favorite part, the owner of the gold bar inscription can redeem it in real life, uh, for an in real life gold bar, uh, at any time. <sighs> so they're offering a custodian. Well, you just like make gold. a call and this like gold yeah. bar turns up. Like that sounds cool. Hey, K Phil, can I get one? How much are they? Yeah. <laughs> Don't How much is this? Look at that 76 million sats though. Fuck that. Like, I think that's what I think. That's oh, what I didn't even is. I didn't even like, notice they had a price think, on this thing. Yeah. That some, yeah, but like Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Dude, 76 you million dude, sats for not someone even... sold someone sold a kidney to buy an NFT last year, Phil. Like it, 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 it's all relative. <sighs> it can get worse, yeah, it so... can get worse. So Ben, I this this the reason why I showed this also is because um, I wanted to get your your thoughts on um, just this this whole type of development, right? Um, you know, I've known you now for for a few Bitcoin cycles, and um, I, I guess I'm just very curious, like. This is, you know, back in 2017, 2018, we used to talk about, not necessarily you, but just Bitcoiners in general would talk about, hey, you know, like, uh, you know, if the shitcoining comes to Bitcoin, at least it's on the Bitcoin network, right? Like there were some Bitcoiners that were proponents of that. And I'm not suggesting that you are, but I would just like to get your take. Like, I, it's here, right? Let's be honest. It's here because that's what that is. You know, like it's, I, I understand that's, you know, some people believe that it's somehow art or whatever it is, what but in my monetary eyes, monetary maximalists and yeah. platform maximalists or something like this. Yeah. It's like, um, some people believe that Bitcoin is the money. There's no other money. And then some people believe that everything should be built on Bitcoin or something like that. Yeah. And it's it just be both, right? Uh, to a certain extent, you can be yeah. both, right? There's compromises in both. But so, what are your what are your thoughts on this? Like, that's it. We've got ordinals, we've got runes, we've got all this stuff. I mean, it's in my eyes. I, I'm not going to call it spam, right? I just call it shitcoining because to me, it is technology that does not need to be tokenized. It doesn't mean that people shouldn't be doing experiments and learning, but I don't think they need to be selling a a fake, in my eyes, a fake product uh, as a result you know, to essentially monetize that technology at this stage. Anyways, what are your thoughts? So, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't hate uh, ordinals, runes, that stuff, but I don't like it really either. I don't care that much about them, to be honest. Um, so it has some good effects and some bad effects, right? 
Um, in the good effects, it helps to some extent. It does help a lot in development of Bitcoin, right? It does help push conversation into developing Bitcoin into advancing the the um, the on chain tech. Like the like, people are suddenly uh, talking about new soft forks, about new opcodes. Uh, there is a lot of stuff that is that is going on, and there is a lot of funding that comes to that too right now, right? So a lot of focus, um, a lot of uh, people that are now working on that again. It has some good uh, good effects, uh, but yeah, also some like I don't I don't find runes interesting, right? I don't find I didn't like shitcoining when it was on Ethereum. I don't like shitcoining when it was on Bitcoin. I didn't like NFTs when they were on Ethereum. I don't like them now that they are on Bitcoin. I understand that some people do. Um, I I think like maybe the difference between now and I don't know 2017 is that people are more aware that like what are what they're buying now. Like we're like past the all this charade of like this NFT is the future of everything, right? Like mm. I think people that buy an NFT right now like are aware that they're just buying a picture on the on like on the internet, right? Mm. Uh, if they choose to do that, I I wouldn't, right? But I think that by now they are already aware that that's what they're doing, right? They, there's no like uh, trying to phrase it differently anymore. We hope so, right? Like you kind of hope that they're aware, and I think you're right. And I think that the uh, proliferation of the meme coins is kind of what illustrates that, right? Because you remember how like there used to be we talk about we've talked about this before, uh, just in general. You know, there used to be all kinds of elaborate white papers and, you know, documentation exactly, exactly. about the there ICOs, was all this charade, right? right? About, <laughs> yeah, about, okay, this is going to be the future and yeah. we're going to do IoT on the blockchain. Here's a super technical white paper to show you that this IoT will talk to this AI coin that will talk to this, I don't know, supercomputer coin, right? And they will all be coining together or something, right? Yes. Uh, we don't have that anymore, right? We we have Habibi coin, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. We, we have like shitcoin that that it calls itself shitcoin, right? Uh, yeah. they, these are meme coins. It's it's just casino, right? People like casinos anyway. I mean, I'm not gonna judge people who go to the casino. Um, I don't judge people who go to Vegas or something. And yeah, I mean, if people are just aware that this is what they do, then I mean, fine. That's not such a big problem right to me you hit, the, you hit the nail on the head if people are aware then it's not such a big problem and i do think that that is incredibly important right that's something i've also said if if a person um is fully aware of what it is that they're doing then there is no tragedy right the tragedy occurs yeah. when somebody is being grifted and somebody is being scammed right they believe a but the truth is really b so you know, like mm -hmm. that. Yeah, I totally agree. Anyways. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, go ahead. Final thoughts before we wrap up. No, this there's episode. there's just no like charade anymore. You don't try to sell people really. You don't see uh, almost any more people trying to sell you. Okay, this be the future of one thing or this will give you super yields or stuff like people just see, okay, I might buy this coin and maybe they will pump it and it will go up and maybe I'll lose it. But it, it, it's just like a meme, right? It's just yeah. nothing. I'm aware that I'm buying nothing. I think exactly. everyone's aware of this now, right? There, there are, there is Bitcoin and there are meme coins and that's it. Yep. That's right. It's, it's the, mm -hmm. it's the evolution of it. Guys, this is going to wrap up the numbers and we are going to move it on over to the Fireside Chat. The Pleb Underground is brought to you by Thunder Funder. Check it out, thunderfunder.com. Thunder Funder is a funding portal registered with the SEC and a member of FINRA. Their mission is to provide retail investors access to investments while supporting the growth of open source projects. They love Bitcoin. Check out their shit coins. That's thunderfunder.com. Welcome back, everyone. That's right. Fireside chat time with Ben. And as you guys know, Ben is the lead dev at Bitcoin Keeper. So let's let's dive into it right away. I got some other stuff I want to talk to you about too, but first let's let's talk about Bitcoin Keeper. What you're the lead dev there. Tell us about the app. What is it that, you know, what's your use case? What are you guys disrupting or trying to fix yeah, for sure. people? 
or trying to make better for people or a bit of everything. <laughs> sure. Yeah, we're, we're trying to make, in general, we're trying to make self-custody better, right? Uh, self-custody isn't the easiest thing, right? Uh, it's complicated. Uh, you have a lot of options. Uh, you need to plan for your inheritance eventually. Uh, there are a lot of parts in that, right? Uh, so Bitcoin Keeper help, like tries to help people with, with everything, right? It tries to be the tool for people to, to self-custody their Bitcoin, right, for the long term. Uh, it offers you a hot wallet. It offers you um, to use hardware wallets. It offers you to create multi-sigs. Um, it will. It offers you some sorts of assisted custody, and we're working to to improve even on that uh, with Miniscript in the very near future. Uh, so lots of stuff basically. Um, but yeah, it's basically just an app to for for everything self custody. I would say for everything self custody, key management. Um, protecting a Bitcoin. Hmm. So, yeah, so I see here that, I mean, obviously it's an app, right? So it kind of, um, what feedback, because you said it's kind of trying to be everything and, and as you explained, it works with, with hardware wallets, but have you gotten any pushback on it really being a solution for cold storage, right? Because cold storage is very very specific and people are very finicky, right? Uh, about cold storage. Like when you talk about cold storage, there's, I, I find people have different degrees of what they consider, even though there's, in my eyes, there's real cold storage, which is essentially this uh, signing device never actually touches uh, touches the internet, right? When it, when generating, when mm -hmm. generating the seed and everything like that. Um, and then there's varying degrees. Now in this case, um, I feel I like guess, those single sig, yeah. Phil. It's easily warmed up. Like, how cold is single sig? If you can kind of warm, if it's only one thing, you got to warm up. Like, I, I know, but the twenty fifth word. I know, I know, I know. People don't like the. I know. Uh, I'm just, I, I just, you know me. I'm a multi. I know. Maxi. You're multi sig, Maxi. And it, I, I do agree. No, but uh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Anyways, uh, going back to this, like, have you gotten any kind of pushback uh, in in that in that regards? Right, that this isn't really a solution for cold storage but really more you know kind of like a hot wallet solution i'm just wondering so not really because it it offers you a hot wallet if you want right so a lot of um setups will offer you a hot wallet if you want but uh it offers you completely cold storage right it's not that you have to use the hot wallet for anything uh you can use your hardware wallet for everything right so in in what sense do you mean I, I guess I, I'm thinking of it because it, it has a, um, it's an app on your phone. That, okay, that's, I see. That, I see. that's really I see. I see why I'm, I'm looking at it I that way. Yeah. yeah but nunchuck kind of like Nunchuck, right? It's kind of, it reminds, nunchuck makes me think of Nunchuck. I know, yeah. but that's my point. But I consider Nunchuck a hot wallet. I don't consider it. So, I, I just do. Yeah, I, I can explain. You could do explain, if you have so. the keys in the app, right? Like you could have like a, a sign up <laughs> as part of the as part of the app, but you don't have to have any hot keys on this on the, it's a view only wallet, Phil. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I can explain, right? Okay. So yeah, I, I I get it that it's definitely counterintuitive that it's on your phone and not on the computer. But yeah, when you try to actually think about it, it's actually a, a huge plus, right? Com because a phone is actually way more secure than a computer. A uh, computer, you just click on some link and uh, you're, you're, you're done. done. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, it's so, you, people don't understand how easy it is to screw your computer, right? Uh, you install something bad, you're done. Like on, on a phone, do you imagine installing an app and then your phone is, is completely compromised? I mean, no, but with, with your computer, it's, it's, it can happen anytime, right? Um, so the, people don't really, yeah, when you try to think about it, it's a bit counterintuitive for most people, even for me at first. But yeah, I mean, your phone is actually way more secure than, than your computer. It's way more secure to use your, your phone than your computer. And essentially, it does the same thing, right? It, if you don't want a hot wallet, you don't use a hot wallet. You use completely cold storage. So the only thing is whatever the, the coordinator app, right? The, the app that coordinates your multisig, whatever it runs on your computer or on your phone, right? That's the only difference. And in that sense, I mean, running on your phone is actually more secure than running on your computer. It's actually better than 
than running on your computer, right? So it, it, I found that is that something that you use a lot, right? So it kind of feels counterintuitive, but first of all, a lot of more people have uh, have access to phones, right? It's easier to yeah. get it, cheaper, easier to have around. Second thing, uh, it's more secure, right? Phones are built for better security than than computers. Like that's it. Like a desktop is always is never gonna be built in the same way that that a phone is, right? That a mobile operating system is, right? Yeah. So it's also more secure. Um, third thing, if you really want, uh, you can buy an extra phone, right? You can buy an extra phone and install it on it, right? So you don't have to use it on your main phone. That's a good point. Um, I was scrolling through the site as you were explaining everything, um, uh, the Bitcoin Keeper site, and I noticed at the bottom, uh, you guys have a feature there called the concierge service, and it says that it's it's beta. Can you uh, Can you talk to us about the concierge service? Sure, sure. So yeah, the concierge is basically helping the users um, and getting them through with, with self-custody, right? So it's still something that we're working on. It's still not fully out. But yeah, it's basically a service with a few tiers, right? So first of all, you have the basic, which is just um, full access from within the app to the knowledge base. So if you have like any question, you can see a lot of articles, lots of materials, and usually can get your question and, and like answered just by reading through it, just uh, mm -hmm. doing a simple search and getting your, your answer there, right? Um, on a higher tier, you can get like chat support from within the app, right? So you will be able to, okay, I need help with something. I have a question about something. You can actually get a response from, from someone. And on even a higher tier, you can actually get uh, like a video chat support if you need. Uh, but like a live chat support, live uh, video chat support or live call, basically, where where you can get help. So we 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 want to make it a full solution for people that that need any help with their self custody. So um, since it's in beta, do you have? I, I'm assuming you have people right now. Do you have people using each tier of this service to to kind of test it out, or what? I guess what's kind of going on right so now so i it's we 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 plan to do it really soon i'm i'm hoping like a month or so more or less it got it just got a bit delayed but i i think about a month or so and we we start doing this and, and I'm, as you were explaining i guess um you're going to have different uh you you have the different pricing <laughs> tiers um have you already priced out what the tiers are and what each of those tiers are going to entail for services yeah so we have the current pricing now we're we're considering if this is the right one going forward but right now the pricing is uh, i think like ten dollars for uh the middle tier mm -hmm. the, the free there's the free tier of course then the middle one for 10 a month and the, the last one is for 40 a month and that's the one where you can get remote support right yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty good. How much, uh, if you don't mind me asking, how much remote support does that get you? <laughs> uh, yeah, again, so we're still uh, oh, planning okay. it out, right? So it's still in work. Right? It's still not out. Yeah. I, I, was, I was just curious, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, that, yeah, no, for sure. For that's sure. awesome. That's awesome. So when, um, I guess, when do you plan on having the uh, the concierge service finally released? Not in um, beta, I guess so, you'd say, not in beta. Yeah, I, I can't say really for, for sure. So I'm still working, we're still working on that, right? So mm -hmm. we have most of the fun like technical functionality to, to support that. But of course, we'll need to, to test it out first and see how, like the responses we get from users, the feedback, and then it will depend on that, right? So we mm -hmm. kind of, I think we're mostly done with what depends on us, not 100%, right? But we're get pretty close to the to, to being done with, with what depends on us. But then we, we want to see the feedback from the users and then we will, uh, we will be in a better position to decide. Hmm. Very nice, very nice. All right, you know what? You've convinced me. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm at least gonna install the app. Um, I looked through it. <laughs> I like the uh, the yeah, screenshots. Yeah, give it a try. So I'm definitely gonna give it. I I try to give. I, I try to give every. You know, I, I try to give every single one of these. You know, a shot. 
and and just to just to see and again i you know i always talk to walton about this i really like i really like nunchuck uh so that right now is kind of like my uh, my go-to but i'm i'm super excited to try out bitcoin keeper <laughs> walton's always thrilled about that but yeah i i'm super excited to try out bitcoin keeper i uh, I, I think that this mm-hmm. looks really promising i really like what uh, what you guys are doing i guess um one last question that i had uh is can you share anything that um you're working on that is not out yet any kind of teasers or something like that yeah yeah so yeah i think one thing that we're we're working on is is mini script stuff right so mini script enables so many options for improving bitcoin self custody um it allows you better um better options right with um with assisted custody first of all but also with uh, a, lot, a lot of options yourself, right? Uh, it makes it easy to 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 use it with, with hardware wallets that now support Miniscript, finally. Um, yeah, so you want to ask something? Yeah, yeah. So to, uh, along those lines, right? So to the average user, right? Uh, what does that, what does incorporating Miniscript look like for them? Meaning yeah, okay. like in, in terms of a, a use case or a feature set that they would either have improved or something that is now new? Yeah, um, of course. Yeah. So basically Miniscript will provide, uh, it's basically kind of a somewhat simplified programming language for, for Bitcoin. You could think of it, mm-hmm. right? So what, what it provides eventually for the users is um, more expressivity in how they want to manage their their spending conditions on their Bitcoin. Uh, it allows you to, to do stuff more easily. Like, for example, you want to set up some uh, multi-sig that is, let's say, a three or five multi-sig. And then after two or three years, it, go, it becomes, um, let's say, a two or five multi-sig, right? Uh, so it's easier to spend if if you for example if you what's, lost what's keys, the word right? for this it's like it's not condensing uh, but it's like sig, i guess what do they call it again I, deteriorating I, I'll, I'll, yeah deteriorating uh degrading uh um, degrading i, I don't yeah, know okay. yeah so it sounds so like you, you can, guys are doing yeah. something quite similar to what um uh the anchor watch are doing but anchor for watch. but for retail rather than for institutions is that a fair thing to say i know rob hamilton is a big uh mini script fan and i think i believe that mm-hmm. that's how they built anchor watch um you... yeah 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 I, th- I think it's fair right so they are they are real pioneers on on mini script work uh, and it's really great to see the the work right uh, but yeah we were working on a different market but again with mini script so it's the same technology but applying it for different uses <laughs> I'm excited. I'm definitely excited. I, I know that we're still at like this crossroads in Bitcoin, right? Where where we just there's so much right now. There's way more that is unknown than what is known, you know. So it's it's really excited to uh, to see this type of stuff. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna move away from uh, from Bitcoin Keeper, and I am very curious um, because a lot of newer Bitcoiners don't know that you are the uh, the Clown World account. Um, but for those of us who were here for a few cycles, uh, we, we've become very fond of that account. Uh, it's one of the few accounts uh, on Twitter that, or X, whatever you want to call it, that actually, um, interestingly enough, provides more accurate information than the government and the corporate-owned uh, media. So I, I just wanted to ask you your thoughts, uh, having you know been on Twitter for as long as you have, uh, I guess, what do you think about the landscape and how it's changed? You and I were talking about this a little bit before the show. And, you know, there's obviously there's Noster now or Noster, however you want to pronounce it. And I know that a lot of people, a lot of Bitcoiners like to show up uh, on Twitter and talk about how wonderful Noster is. Um, but just what are, your, what are your thoughts about the overall landscape and quote unquote Bitcoin Twitter? I, like as of right now, having gone through multiple cycles, mm-hmm. like, do you see a change in the type of Bitcoiners or the types of people who are interested in Bitcoin that are now showing up? Yeah, um, I could talk a lot about Twitter in general, but <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, it completely changed, right? So I'd say, first of all, about Bitcoin Twitter specifically, 
it basically kind of peaked around uh, 2021, let's say, and from then on, it basically started disappearing, right? Started dying. Uh, right now, it's it's not it still kind of exists, but it's not. It just it's not what it used to be, right? So it used to be kind of a, a real community, right? You could go there, um, tons of people. Like you kind of felt like you know everybody, right? Um, yes. It kind of, it kind of felt like you, right. You you go there and you you talk to people that you actually kind of know, or like you feel that you know the feeling feeling of like more of a community. Right now, it's yeah, you know, it's more. Twitter in general, like it used to be more like that, and now it's going more of the TikTok road, which is you know sensational stuff, you know, and fragment. Um, so, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's more fights between people. It's more videos of fights, for example. It's more you know just some price, um, price pumping, you know. Um, it's more, you know, it's, it's not, it's nothing technical anymore. Technical content doesn't get much attention anymore. Um, it's not like memes, like internal memes that used to be, or some fun stuff like that. It just, you know, okay. Yeah. The price is going up. Yeah. And everybody's celebrating, right. Or something like that, but it's nothing. Yeah. I mean, the actual community is kind of gone there. I, I think I think you hit the uh, the nail on the head there. Um, I remember we used to all spend a lot of time. The the arguments, okay, or the discussions that we were all having were based on Bitcoin itself, right? On the Bitcoin network, on nodes, uh, about Lightning, about the <clears throat> protocol, stuff like that, right? Like the, these were the types of discussions that were happening. Now, um, the discussions that are happening are uh, much more. Um, how could I say this? Like to your point, sensational, right? They have nothing to actually like the arguments that are happening have nothing to actually do with Bitcoin. They have to do with egos, right? It's it's about mm -hmm. the people yeah. and not yeah. so much about the protocol anymore. So I think that this invites a different type of audience to uh, to the space. And and to your point, um, I, I also feel as though it's fragmented. I, I genuinely agree with you that 2021 was probably the peak and end of like that particular era um, of Bitcoin Twitter, you know, so to speak. So yeah, I uh, I don't know. I kind of feel I kind of feel a little crappy about it. I I got to be honest, right? I, I I kind of feel is. down. I kind of feel sad. Uh, in in all fairness, like look, I have Noster installed. OK, I post there under the Pleb Underground account as often. I don't have my Coin Icarus account there. I did have it there. I did beta testing for Noster way back at the beginning. I know everybody sees me as like a Noster hater, but no, I, I, I like tech, but I'm just not a, a cheerleader for all of this stuff. And to me, I just, you know, when we were talking about this before the show, I, I kind of feel that that Noster kind of helped this fragmentation, you know? Yeah, it, it kind of you, you can say that it did like, right? Now you have a fraction of, of the community, which was always on Twitter, like really, really great Bitcoiners, which just completely split it off, right? So they are now only on Oster. So that kind of split the community even more, right? It was already going down from Twitter and stuff, but now it's like, it made it even worse, right? In that sense. And yeah, Noster is, is nice and everything, but it's... First of all, it's nothing like what Twitter was, right? Uh, it's nothing like uh, it's it's just nothing like that, um, not yet at least for sure. And second, I mean, yeah, it it just kind of feels quiet, I, I guess. There, um, you you have a few good people there, and you can see some oh. stuff, but yeah. you you cannot like have be like lots of conversations all day or lots of stuff all day. Right. You, you see it once in a while and you could, you're kind of synced. I think that people may not want to accept the fact that, you know, X Twitter is 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 a town hall. Like, I understand that it's a corporation and all that good stuff. But the reality is, is that you go over there and you're going to get a whole like uh, it's it's a whole mishmash <laughs> of different opinions. Right. From all different people, from all different places and all this stuff. And. In on on Noster, at least in terms of myself, right? Uh, my experience, well, it it's a total echo chamber for me. 
you know, and, and I understand that that mm -hmm. maybe that just means I need to follow different people, but uh, or friend different people on Noster, but it's still, you know, like the people that are there are the people that already share many of the similar or same ideologies, right? And the whole point of Twitter is that you will put out this messaging that you put out and somebody who is not in your circle may read this and vice versa for you, that you will read something outside of your bubble and have your ideas challenged or, you know, your opinion challenged and, and it'll make mm -hmm. you... I don't know. I just see it as much more of like, as much as I hate the corporation and everything, I do still think that um, it offers a better town hall for the battle of ideas. I, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I think I think you're right on that. Um, yeah, in general, also the the entire shift that was on on Twitter on X. I mean, it was also like, you know, this Nostra had some small influence on the Bitcoin community there, right? But a lot of it wasn't, was really just decisions that were made, right, by, by Elon, I guess. Uh, because Twitter right now is, you know, it's a lot more on the monetization, right? About monetizing yes. their content. And yes. that incentives, incentivizes people to, to just post stuff that will get them a lot of likes, right? It doesn't post them, like, uh, make them post something that is interesting, right? That is actual content or actual technical stuff, actual added value, right? It just like incentivizes them to do either like big news headlines, uh, some big slogans, uh, like sensational videos, all that type of stuff, right? That's, mm -hmm. that's what it incentivizes, right? Yeah. So that's a shift that is, I would say, attributed yeah, to, to the change in Twitter itself. Um, change of its algorithm and the change of the business, I would say, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So even even now, like even regardless of Nostra, like Twitter is just it's not what it used to be, right? It's completely different from from what it used to be. Um, well, it feels watered down. You would down. think, yeah, yeah, and a lot of stuff like you feel like they might be good ideas, like when you thought of them in theory, but yeah, in practice, you see that they just yeah, it it sucks. It really sucks. The entire monetization stuff. I mean, it it sucks. It, honestly, it just it, destroyed Twitter. It feels. It it did. It just I, made I, it a, a written TikTok to me. To be honest, I can't disagree, I, and and you can feel it. Uh, it's too bad. But look, uh, Ben, uh, we're gonna wrap up the uh, the fireside chat. I really appreciate your takes. Um, how can the viewers or listeners get in touch with you? What is the best way? Um, yeah, I guess on, on Twitter, like, um, my DMs are open and it's, it's the easiest way to reach me. So at, at, um, underscore Ben Kaufman, uh, that's, that's my Twitter handle. We're going to put it in Besides, the show notes. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think, I think that's, that's the best way to, to reach out to me, honestly. Very cool. Very cool. We're going to add that to the show notes. We're also going to have links, uh, to, uh, Bitcoin keeper. And what else here? What else are we going to have uh, links to? Yeah, that's right. Bitcoin Keeper app and the Bitcoin Keeper Twitter. All right. That's going to wrap up the fireside chat. And we're going to move it on over to Wrecked. Pleb Underground is brought to you by our newest sponsor, No Hue. Check them out at nohue.com. That's right, guys. The best Bitcoin builders in the space are coming together under one banner. Look for more people and more companies to be joining. Nohue.com, Proof of Ink, Stack Chain Magazine, BTC Pins, Asanoha Gold, Crypto Cloaks, and BTC Sessions are already members. Go check out what's going on at Nohue.com. Welcome back to Wrecked. Let's dive into it. I've got... It's the haircut, right, Phil? It's, it's so the freaking haircut, man. What the hell is going on? Oh, great. Look at that. He, his haircut caused the page to go unresponsive. Oh, no. Now it's all moving and everything. Okay, hold on, hold on. I don't know what just happened there. But anyways, let's let's just watch this video. So this is a retweet, right, from Fractal Encrypt, our boy Fractal. Here we go. A million sat says they find no Bitcoin on the laptop. Now, indeed, Walton is correct. That haircut is wrecked. But I think what's even more wrecked 
is this whole entire narrative because it's really just for clicks and views. And of course, people are going to be like, well, Phil, you're giving it attention. Like, yeah, cry harder. <laughs> I'm just making this fun of This looks like Malas like SV, this guy here. <laughs> this, guy, <laughs> SV. this guy looks like a shit coin. I'm sorry. That's, I know that's mean, but here we go. It's okay. You can make fun of me too. My stupid glasses, my bald head, whatever. All right, here we go. Let's. Yeah, but you're not wearing a $4,000 hoodie like these guys, right? No, that's true. I'm smarter than that. <laughs> Here we go. Bitcoin, and nobody knows who he is. The lore is that there's this laptop that has a million Bitcoin on it worth roughly $65 billion. We think we found a laptop. There's only one problem is Meredith is positive her husband, Len Sassman, was not Satoshi, and this computer does not have the Satoshi wallet on it. you think is on the laptop? I really don't think I'm going to find 1.1 million Bitcoin. But like, we got to know. Hi, I spoke with Meredith. She is down. She's going to allow us to fund the decrypting of these laptops. And we're going to be the first people to go through what might be like the laptop. Stay tuned. Three to four weeks. We're yeah. Okay. There you go. Stay tuned for three to four weeks of clicks and views while we sit yeah, here you and see, jerk everybody that off. Was, <laughs> that's exactly what I was talking about with the Twitter becoming sensational <laughs> videos and big headline stuff, right? This is not what you, Twitter used to be, right? This is not the stuff you used to see on Twitter. Like this thing, a few years ago, you wouldn't see that stuff on Twitter ever, right? This shit belongs right on TikTok. Right now, it's the only thing Look, that you see. The shit coin has taken exactly. a while to work out how to like monetize like the other retards in their herd. Like, you know, give them time. Like, not everyone's okay. as fast as you, Ben. Okay, okay. I mean, he is he is the only Ben on the Council of Bens. The only actual yeah, we, Ben. Did so we, talk, we didn't talk we about did not, that. We, we did not talk, talk about that. But, but, but we'll talk about it during Rex. thing for Rex. We'll talk yeah. about that in a minute, Phil. Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. So hold on. We're almost done with these stories. Then we could talk about Ben and the Council of Bens and how they're all wrecked and they're not the real Bens. Okay, anyways, here we go. Uh, let's do it. Beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> but we're going to do it. All right. So that's right, guys. Bitcoin has amnesia. And guess what? He back. He broke. And he begging. Craig Dude, writes. I saw this. This is so funny. This is so I was, stupid. I was in, Berlin, in Berlin, Bitcoin Plus Plus, a few of us are like looking. This is like, wait, he he actually found like a new way to like cry about like it's uh, uh the the Bitcoin. Like, oh, there's a new defense, really. It's so stupid, man. I can't believe like why. Anyways, Craig Wright says Bitcoin devs misled the public. Okay, that's right, guys. Misled the public. So. Craig Wright launches new legal battle, claiming that Bitcoin developers have deviated from the original vision of the project and insisting that Bitcoin SV is a real Bitcoin. So the exact same allegations all over again, even though even though Judge Mahler's or Mahler's or I forget what his name is, um, actually, do you, do you remember what his name was, Walton? I don't know. I feel like you might know. But anyways, um, it, it doesn't matter. The point is, is that he was already proven beyond the shadow of a doubt in the UK legal court that he is not Satoshi. And th this is just ridiculous nonsense. Anyways, let's continue. He believes that the defendants created confusion within the market and misled the public into believing that BTC remains the attributes of the original Bitcoin. And here we go. This is my favorite part. This is where we play magic numbers. The claim seeks a total of $1.18 billion from the defendants because... The financial right, impact. Just pause there, Phil. Pause yes. there. It says when the form was filed, Bitcoin was trading at sixty-two thousand dollars. I think we're about there right now, yeah. And it says yeah. while well, BSV sat at just sixty-five dollars. Well, if you look on the left of your screen there, you can see it's pumped to fifty-two dollars <laughs> almost. So um, it sounds like it's uh, been doing well recently. Can I congratulate them on on getting back above the fifty-dollar mark? Because I know uh, they had no, some times below pound. it. You're confusing. No, fifty dollars. No, no, yeah, yeah, no. no the, what I'm saying is that they, in the, in, when they file this form here, but like these, we've got live data here on the left of the screen here, yeah, they were showing 50 that they pounds. they've That's come back up above fifty dollars. I think having having dipped below, you can see earlier this month. So um, well well done on their their recent dead cat bounce. Um, but why are they doing this, Phil? Well, he's pot committed. At this point, Craig Wright cannot stop fighting this because the moment he does well then he's acknowledging to 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 the man paying the bills mr calvin air that actually maybe maybe he isn't satoshi in which case calvin is going to be pretty angry with him um because he can no longer uh, get his money back uh from from the arena that is the court system i think it's very well said very well said um so yeah, this magic number that he came up with, 
reflects the financial impact of misrepresentation and resulting market loss. So the delusion, the fact that our society even validates this delusion in any way, shape, or form is really why we can't have nice things. It's one of the many reasons why we can't have nice things. And as long as this guy continues to get taken seriously and continues to be allowed to waste everybody's time and money, we're going to continue to not have nice things. He's he's just How it's is the he most still ridiculous like not shit. Not in jail for forgery, right? Right. I mean, I, th I, th I thought I thought it was like a and like a lawsuit on and against him for for forgery, right? Like that's what I, I was yeah. aware of. Most recently, that's right. That that has been filed against him, but this it doesn't stop him from going and doing this stupid shit. <laughs> and and the sad thing is, is that you know the the BSV supporters they're so brain dead and their bags are so heavy that like th this is they can't let go of this. Right, like nobody can let go of this. It's it's just it's just awful. Anyways, all right, moving on from from Craig. So that's right, he back, he broken, he begging. Okay, so this is an interesting tweet uh, from Jameson Lop here. It got me thinking. My long term Bitcoin concerns mostly revolve around apathy. What if not enough people care to self custody? What if not enough people care to enforce the rules by running nodes? What if, not, what if not enough people care to put in the hard work seeking consensus for improving Bitcoin? The most important thing is that we continue discussing Bitcoin. The exchange rate is merely a signal that we have done well so far. Interesting take. I think that, I, and I gotta say, I can't, I can't disagree. Right. And this kind of goes back to that conversation we were having, Ben, uh, before, right, about how Bitcoin Twitter has changed and how there used to be much more technical conversations, technical discussions, um, and, and that kind of has morphed away to more sensationalism. And uh, in all fairness, the it seems as though the issues that are described, the way in which they are described is much more sensationally rather than with... Uh, you know, clear and, and objective points for and against, you know, certain things being developed in Bitcoin. And I know those other conversations are happening in, in other places, but I'm just saying in these public forums, we're seeing them disappear. And I, I think that to Jameis and Lop's point, right, it just kind of makes people shrug their shoulders. What are your what are your thoughts on his take about people not caring about these things? And do you think he's correct? Yeah, I think is is it's a good point, right? Uh, and it's a, a valid concern. But I think the important thing is not like I don't think the majority does or ever will care about running their node in self custody. But I think if um, a strong enough minority cares about it, that that for now it is it has been enough, right? And I think it can be enough, right? Mm -hmm. If a strong enough minority does, right? Like like we do now. When does it not become enough? I think about that sometimes because we are essentially the intolerant minority, if you think about it. So mm -hmm. is there a breaking point where the intolerant minority is not enough? I wonder. Yeah. Walton, any uh, any thoughts on this? Any thoughts on Jameson's tweet? Hey? Uh so uh, Jameson was, I guess, like to some degree, a hero that I had to kill uh, because he was someone who I respected on um, Bitcoin security more than anyone. I was a, I was a, you know, minor CASA user, but I was paying my hundred and twenty dollars or whatever it was a year, um, and was a big fan of their service until they adopted Ethereum. Um, and I used to direct every single person to Lop.net. Uh, and I, I no longer do. Um, Jameson Lop is now a taproot wizard. Um, I saw him at their party in Nashville, um, but he, he, you know, he has the little affiliation on on Twitter as well. Um, I don't know. I've kind of like I, I I stop when I when I stop respecting people. I stop listening to. I stop listening to them on the things that even they, you know, they're knowledgeable about because I think that they have like broken incentives. And so I don't know. I just, I can't, can't I stop being able to do it. Um, I can respect that. You know, it's like, it's like, like Nick Carter used to be a great spokesperson for, for Bitcoin, right? At some point Ugh. to me, Jameson Lop is, is now kind of in the same bucket as, uh, 
Nick Carter. There's these like again, it's they 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 went past the GG number. What's GG's number? This is this constant that I, I I believe, which is that if you gain more followers than GG on social media in the Bitcoin space, you get bought by other people. Um, yeah. So far, this is proving true. It's proving true. Anyways, guys, that's going to wrap up Wrecked. And we are going to move it on over to the Hopium. The Hopium. Pleb Underground is brought to you by CypherSafe. Check them out at cyphersafe.io. Guys, you know that I am a pet rock enjoyer, and this is the pet rock for Bitcoiners. That's right, the Bitcoin Rolo Triangle. 16 ounces of solid titanium. Check it out at cyphersafe.io and look for new products that are going to be coming out very soon at cyphersafe.io. And welcome back to Hopium this week. Where first, um, I'm, I'm sharing a, a real life meme that that I made. Um, in uh, it, people said there are no, there's no innovation in the the panel format, but this is not true. Um, um, if if you are, you know, of a certain mindset, you can you can devise new ways to to help your audience see everyone on stage. Um, and you can make Bitcoin conferences weird again, uh, t to quote uh, the the Cali uh, here. Um, yeah, uh, Bitcoin plus plus for me uh, last week in Berlin um, um, is is featured on this week's Hopium because um, I don't know about you guys, but every time I spend time around people in the Bitcoin space who are building things, I feel incredibly bullish. Um, not the kind of bullish where it's like, oh, the price is going to go up like to a million tomorrow. Not some scams and mal nonsense. Like they're just like, oh no, there are there are people really thinking long long term here. People thinking strategically. People trying to deal with the different use cases that people have for Bitcoin. I don't mean shit coins. I mean like you know that some people for some people privacy is is it is you know of incredible importance you know for every single step they make other people it's you know i don't know security is more important you know there's trade-offs between these things but the, the point being is that like there are um there are a lot of people building some pretty incredible things uh in in bitcoin right now and i think anytime like bitcoin twitter gets a bit noisy um people need to kind of re-plug in to Bitcoin technical communities now, whether that's at, you know, niche or not so niche Bitcoin technical conferences or, you know, attending things like bit devs. Um, I think people need to do more of this. I think it's easy to, to feel like, Oh, nothing's, nothing's happening in Bitcoin, but maybe it's that, you know, you just stop really listening, you know, with your ears to the floor. Maybe you just hang around with Bitcoin as, because you know they're 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 you know they're the kind of people that are your tribe, but you don't really focus on Bitcoin anymore. Maybe maybe that's what what's going on. I think I don't know. I I yeah. I'm always always bullish spending time around these builders. Um, your thoughts, gentlemen? Absolutely. So first of all, awesome that you were hanging out with Super Test Nets. I'm sure that that was a good time all on its own. Um, I do appreciate the innovation in the scaffold panel. Um. I, I as soon as I saw I told you this uh, in, in a message as soon as uh, as soon as you told me that that was your idea I'm like I knew it <laughs> as soon as I saw you guys sitting there I'm like that's a Walton <laughs> for sure so awesome awesome with that and I have to agree uh, entirely that there's a very different feeling right when you go to uh, the influencer type of conferences right the sales marketing conferences the bullishness that you get from that is exactly what you said. It's the NGU type of like fluff, like the Samson mouse stuff, right? And and it's kind of like fast food, right? Like you eat it, you get full, and then you're starving like not even 20 minutes later because there was nothing really in there, right? Like it was there was no substance. But when you go to these, these technical conferences, um, yeah, you get bullish because you're seeing that people actually care and that people are actually building and people are actually having these conversations that you thought 
were actually happening on Twitter, but they're not, <laughs> or not as much, but they're happening at these conferences. And then when you go there, the feeling of bullishness that you get is exactly that, right? It's like eating proper nutrients. You are full, you know, it's like you walk away and you're like, this thing is happening and people are building and they are asking tough questions and they're having tough conversations and it, it's, it, it's not what I think it is. So yeah, I, I think that exposure to the technical conferences definitely changes, um, changes your, your view. And, and I think it definitely helps for, um, for conviction. Anyways, Ben, what are your thoughts? You're actually a builder in the space. You know, we just objectively create content. So it's not the same thing. Um, what are your thoughts on this? Like, are we, are we just blowing smoke up people's asses because they're, they're writing code or are, is this accurate? What are your thoughts? No, I mean, it depends, but it, it's always fun to see, to see people in action, right? To see this in action, right? Uh, to hear about the new developments, to see that, like, the, the stuff that people are actually doing. Um, it's, it's always really nice and it always pumps you up and it's super cool, right? And, yeah, of course, it's way more interesting than just saying, okay, the price is going up, let's celebrate, right? Um, seeing the actual stuff that people build or, to me, honestly more than seeing what people build is how people use it right so i'm super interested in seeing like how like for example local communities are starting to use bitcoin and uh, stuff like that right this is what i find super interesting also um you know so yeah i mean in general the stuff that you see in conferences like technical conferences uh, most of all yeah it's it's super great to see i mean it really pumps you up and it's really nice to like i mean it shows you like the purpose of Bitcoin to some extent. Yeah. Yeah. I a hundred percent agree. I think it's interesting. You mentioned the communities aspect of it. Um, and there's, there was an interesting revelation, um, kind of re re pointed out to me, uh, by Obi at the conference, which is that the, in the developing world where there are f fewer regulations, especially in the financial space, you're actually going to see, uh, therefore, more people running e-cash mints um, uh, in 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 those kind of jurisdictions, and so then you might actually have uh, uh, people in the Western world using mints that are in developing world, the developing world, uh, and so essentially that what that will mean is the banks are now in places like Nigeria. And uh, all of us, all of us Westerners, are sending our money to Nigeria um, because we we can, right because because we can we can gain the privacy aspect of you know of uh, of the, their lack of regulation or you know it's it's going to be an interesting um, yeah development how like yeah how how you know will will the will the Western world realize that regulation like is is really impairing. Um, what's the word economic development um as as maybe uh things like e-cash level the financial playing field i feel like the nigerian princes are going to be in disbelief <laughs> I know, it's amazing, like damn right? it why didn't i think of this <laughs> yeah. i've been yeah. wasting my time sending emails <laughs> anyways Anyways. And so, and so, like, I, yeah, I was initially ver like, uh, I don't know, I was pretty, pretty skeptical about eCash, but I'm, it's growing on me a little bit. I still mm. don't, uh, I, I, I think I have like, is it like four? I might have forty sats or something, but that's only sats that someone gave me. I'm, I still have not bought any eCash. I'm like, nah, yeah, not sure about it just yet, but um, I am, I am warming to it. Um, the last, the lo final, um thing I want to share from from Bitcoin plus plus um, uh, a friend of mine Alex Lewin um, was was lucky enough to be able to have a, a selfie taken with one of his heroes Cali of course um, one of the, the kind of creators of, of eCash 2.0 on top of Bitcoin um, and all he had to do was donate some sats to the the eCash foundation um, uh, the, uh, maybe, maybe this makes me a shit coiner because I set up this I set up this meme where people could buy a selfie with with their hero Cali, um, um, and maybe that's not exactly what they got. But like, I think everyone was happy, so it's good, right, Phil? Yeah, I don't yeah. see why not. 
know. Callie, Callie's looking good. Yeah. Ever, you know. Yeah. Who's he sitting with? That's Ka that's Callie and uh, yeah. Alex Lewin. Alex oh. Lewin works for for, for Fetty now. He's a uh, yeah. Ah, oh, so, another so Fetty guy. He's a developer. He's a Fetty guy now. Yeah. It's another Fetty yeah. guy. All right. Yeah. I don't like what kind of Bitcoiners like name their app with the first three letters being <sighs> Fed. Like that's just that's that a just troll? bad. That's just terrible. Um. But is that yeah. a troll? Like, is that is that just a really clever troll? Right? No, I think it's because it's federated, Phil. Yeah, um, no, think, you're right. You're yeah, right. I know, I know. I think, um, <laughs> thinking but then, too much but then, low then the marketing IQ. person did also come up with the idea of having like mints, which I, I'm, I'm shaking right now, but I, they're not in my hand, as you can see, uh, or not see. Uh, mints that say Feddy on them. So they're handing out Feddy mints. And Fediment is the, the the name of their protocol. I was like, that's 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 pretty good marketing. Like, and, uh, maybe hey, named it all for the marketing. Breath. Hmm? I, I I said maybe they named it like this all for the marketing. Maybe, yeah. You know, yeah. I don't know. Either way, it, it definitely makes me bullish. Um, before we wrap up the uh, the hopium though, um, I think we just want to quickly talk about. I said we were going to talk about this in Rekt, um, but we didn't. <gasps> The Council of Bens. Yeah, so like right? this makes me bullish, right? Because I always think the Council of Bens is like one of the worst gangs in Bitcoin. But what what we found today is that there is actually a real Ben, and that and they're not just like Benjamins pretending to be Bens. So uh, yeah, we should we should talk about this. Uh, ben, um, why why like when did you find out that the rest of them were LARPs and you're the only real Ben? Uh, and uh, are they still allowed on your council? <laughs> Yeah, of course, of course, we're still a team. But yeah, I was actually kind of surprised that I was the only one. Like that, it's so rare that someone is just named Ben and not Benjamin. So that that was kind of surprising for me. But yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm the only one that is just Ben. I was shocked, uh, in, in all honesty. I've known many Bens throughout my life, and they've all been Benjamins. And that's why before the show, I was certain that you were a Benjamin. <laughs> so... It's pretty crazy. It's pretty yeah. crazy when that happens. Uh, a lot of people don't know about the Council of Bens, though, because this is a, this is a, this is lore from um, a previous. We've had a cycle. couple on the show, right? We've had we uh, Ben Sessions. We've had Ben the Carman. Ben the Carman. Uh, now Ben Kaufman. Right now, Ben. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Right. So look at that. We've already had three Bens from the Council of Bens. We also had, I mean, because there's also a Council of Phils. We had Phil Geiger on the show. So there you go. There's like three other fills. Um, oh, Need Creations. Need Creations is a fill. So there you go. He's yeah, also Phil, in the council of fills. It, Phil, you're not making it happen. Like, I don't think so. There is no... <laughs> there... Yeah, I mean... You Listen, have like, it's just like shit pointing. If I like pretend hard enough, people. it might be real. <laughs> So you know Sorry. when you go to the zoo, you know when you go to the zoo, there's like the lions and the tigers, and then they and then they put like insects and birds before the elephants or whatever. <laughs> Those are what are known as filler animals, right? And I think you're trying to create a filler council here, like just in between, like a council of bends, and then there's something else for anything. You know, put the council of fills in the middle. That's the. <sighs> just... you, you know that meme no. with the with the elephant and the duck and the guy going, what "The fuck is this thing?" Right, right. <laughs> That's what just happened. Oh God. Oh God. Okay. Anyways, guys. Uh, yeah, this is, this is going to wrap up, uh, this episode of Pleb Underground. But before we go one more time, Ben, real Ben, shill your stuff and tell us where people can reach you if they want to talk to you or harass you about what you're developing at Bitcoin Keeper. Go. Yeah, sure. So first of all, everybody who wants, please try the app. Uh, install it, give it a try. Uh, feel free to reach out and share your feedback, like even on the Telegram group that we have or on direct messages on Twitter with me. Like everything works, but just I'm really happy to hear feedback from people. Um, just, you know, things that don't work, things that you would like to see in the app, like really anything about it. Um, you can reach me out on Twitter, uh, underscore Ben Kaufman. Uh, you can check out Keeper in in the on Twitter or in the Telegram group as well, and yeah, just just try it out. Very nice, very nice, guys. All of that's going to be in the show notes. Like I said, wraps up the episode. Don't forget to check us out on our audio only platforms: Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Anchor. If you want to stream us sats, check us out on Fountain.fm. 
Walton, how do we end this? Fuck shit coins. Check out Children of the Corn. Let's go. More toxic. What? What?